With year 9 just around the corner, I guarantee you there's some operators that you're playing wrong. The first of which is Brava. Now, a lot of people play Brava incorrectly because they don't know which utility to hack. What you want to be doing is hacking information utility first. So if you see that they have a Fenrir on the table, your priority should be hacking the Fenrir so they don't know when you're pushing and they won't swing the activated Fenrir device. If you see they have a Maestro or a Valkyrie, you should be hacking those cameras first. Maybe even Alibi Prismas, whatever. But information or trap utility, you want to be hacking first and then you can get whatever else you want to. This even goes for default cameras. There's some really really powerful default cameras that are pretty hard for attackers to shoot unless they already have the information on them like let's say the 90 camera in villa so hacking those cameras as well can be a good priority for you but that's just one mistake i see on brava is people don't know which utility to prioritize so when in doubt do traps or information operators then do like ads's and wamai discs and then anything else you can do with whatever you want Another thing that I see Bravo players doing incorrectly is they're just being wasteful with their drones. Now, the thing about Brava is, yes, she does bring four drones in total, two of which are her primary utility drones, but that doesn't mean that you get to be wasteful with said drones. The fact of the matter is that two drones is not a lot, especially compared to somebody like Flores who has four drones and it allows you to be a lot more wasteful with his drones. With Brava, you don't get that luxury, and you only get three hacks per drone, meaning you only get six pieces of utility that you can hack in total, so you never want to be wasting your drones. Instead, actually use a default drone before you send your first drone in. That way you can see if there's anybody holding where you're about to drone, any mute jammers, mozzie pests, whatever it may be. Once that drone goes in, then you can put your actual drone in. And then it's a lot safer and you know if your drone's gonna get shot or not, and you can get a lot more hacked utility this way. It takes maybe 15 seconds of your time, which is not a lot if you're patient, which is really the name of the game when it comes to playing Brava in the first place. Now, Brava is almost as simple as it gets, but someone who's way more simple is Lion. Now, what I see people doing wrong on Lion is they'll randomly just scan three times throughout the round, when in reality, you should be very, very purposeful with your scans. So the thing about Lion is he has a very, very low skill floor, but a very high skill ceiling. A low skill floor implies that it doesn't take much skill at all to get effectiveness out of the operator. And a high skill ceiling implies that there is a lot of skill that you can obtain in order to play the operator at the highest level, meaning there's a lot you can learn, but it doesn't take much to learn it in the first place. This is because at the bare bones, at the bare minimum, you can actually just randomly scan three times throughout the round, which is what a lot of players do. You don't want to be doing this, but even if you do do it, you still will get some usefulness out of him. But if you want to play him correctly and powerfully, what you start doing is you start lion scanning whenever you or your teammate is about to push. This makes defenders sit still, which makes them a way easier target for you to hit. Then, once you start learning that, you can start to learn really advanced lion clears, like roam clearing with lion. You can drone out a roamer and then scan, so that way if he moves, he'll get pinged and you'll know where he is and you can pre-fire him, or if he sits still, you already droned him and you already know where he is. So you can just as easily pre-fire him and either way, you have information that you can act on. If that wasn't simple enough for you, then also if your teammates are rushing in, you can just lion scan when they rush in because chances are if they're rushing, they probably have some sort of information as well. Also, we're moving into an in information meta right now so using lion scans more tactically is going to actually bear a lot more fruit than just scanning three times throughout the round or whenever your teammates are pushing so making sure that you're using lion scans with pushes making sure that you're using lion scans for clearing roamers is something that's a lot more useful than just scanning randomly or at the beginning of a round speaking of information operators let's move on to the defense where the next operator you're playing wrong is echo now, Echo is probably the most hard operator to learn how to play correctly. He has a very high skill floor, which is the complete opposite of somebody like Lion, who's very easy to learn the base level of how to play. Most people play Echo incorrectly. Now, we are still in a TDM meta. It's not as bad as it was in year eight, but in year nine, we're starting to see a TDM meta mixed with an information meta. And one of the best metas for that is Echo. Most people don't realize that Echo is good in these metas because they play Echo incorrectly. You're not meant to deny plants as Echo. As Echo, you're actually meant to stun people to get kills. Now, if you want to get kills effectively in a kill meta, you need a 1.5 time scope. Well, guess who brings a 1.5 time scope? Echo. Someone, something else that's really powerful for anybody to have on the defense in a TDM or even information meta is a deployable shield. Guess who brings a deployable shield? Echo. Now, if you make the mistake of trying to roam with Echo on his cameras, which I don't really recommend you do in higher elo, then you can also bring impact grenades for roaming. So pretty much either way, Echo is still good in this meta, 
definition wise, but I definitely think that his playstyle is overlooked for the meta currently as well. Because like I said, you can get those cameras, you can hide them in little corners or in little crevices, and then the second that somebody swings a doorway that you're holding an angle on, you can get on the camera, stun them, and then peek the angle and kill them. And because they're stunned, it's a lot easier to do this. Another reason why people don't think Echo is as good as he used to be is because Echo really relied on that screen shake intensity and now that you can turn that off people like ella people like echo are not as useful but i love to disagree because like i said as long as you're swinging off of your echo cameras on stunned players they won't be able to hear you either so sometimes they won't even be looking at you and because you have a suppressed smg they won't be able to see the bullet tracers of where they're being shot from anyways so echo can still be very good even with the screen shake intensity nerf Someone who got buffed recently though that you're playing wrong is Legion. Now the mistake that I see Legion players making is they don't know where to prioritize putting Legion mines. Instead of just throwing Legion mines around where you're playing, here's what you should do. As Legion, throw your first Legion mines that you get in the prep phase on staircases that are the furthest away from where you'll be playing. It goes for pretty much any rechargeable ability in the game, you want to be putting the utility that you get in the prep phase the furthest away from where you're playing. To give you an example of this, let's say that you're playing Legion and you want to give your teammates a mine on a staircase that isn't trapped yet, but it's already a minute into the round. What is really hard for you to do is to leave the spot that you're holding and shooting attackers from, go put a Legion mine across the map, and then come back to the angle that you were holding that attackers probably just took control of anyways. It's risky, it's dangerous, and it's just not worth the risk of having to go and put a Legion mine down across the map to help your teammates. Instead, make those Legion mines the first Legion mines that you put down. And then, once the attackers start pushing you after the prep phase, you can then use the lesion mines that you've gained to put it near you. That way you have lesion mines all across the map, no matter what distance you are away from them, that help you and your teammates, instead of not having any lesion mines near across the map where your teammates are playing, and all of them where you're playing, even though sometimes they don't even push where you are. So, make sure that you're putting it across the map from where you're playing first, and then close to you after. If you don't know where exactly to put it, in terms of like across the map, make sure you put it on staircases first. Then once you put it on staircases, put it on doorways. Then once you put it on doorways, you should have enough lesion mines down in the prep phase to be able to use the rest on yourself, so it all works out. Now lesion has a lot of traps. Somebody who has way less utility that you have to worry about is Alibi. Now most people when they play Alibi, They'll put clones down on site and then they'll go roam. And you don't want to be doing this. The reason being is because if you're playing an operator, you should use their utility, especially if you're a selfish player who's roaming with Alibi, you should also selfishly use her utility. You might as well double down on your playstyle. Instead of putting your Alibi clones on site, roam with them. What you want to do is put Alibi clones near where you're playing and then put observation blockers in front of those Alibi clones. These observation blockers will make it to where if anyone tries to drone out your Alibi clones, they can't. And it also makes it to where it's a little harder to drone you out too as a side bonus. But if they're not able to drone out your Alibi clones, then when they swing the door and they see your Alibi clone, they're not going to know it was there in the first place and they're 10 times more likely to shoot the Alibi clone. This gives you information and if you're right next to your clone hiding and someone gets pinged, you can easily swing and get that kill because you have information and they don't due to the fact that you have observation blockers. So not only should you be roaming with your alibi clones, unlike what you're doing, but you also should be bringing observation blockers to block your clones so that they're more likely to get shot and you're more likely to get information kills. It's a very, very easy thing that you can change at a fundamental level of playing alibi that will increase the amount of times that you're able to get kills and round wins on alibi immediately. A change that is a little bit less noticeable the more that you do it though, is playing Ying correctly. Most people when they play Ying is they try to use her flash grenades in order to blind people for kills. Now this is a way that you can play Ying, but it's not the best way. The best way to play Ying is to use her candelas to take space, and to take kills when it's needed. What do I mean by this? Well, as Ying, her candelas are able to be charged. You can either throw it in with no charge, with one bar of charge, with two bars of charge, or with three and all bars of charge. The more you charge the Ying candela, the shorter amount of time it takes for it to explode its blinds and blind people. Now, why would you ever want to not charge it fully? Charging it fully implies that they have the least amount of time to react and shoot your Ying candela, and they get blinded almost immediately. Well, you only want to be fully cooking your Ying Candelas if you're going for a kill. 
let's say you know someone's around the corner, you're not really playing with your team or taking space for that matter like you would with a more team-oriented operator, you're kind of just trying to blind people and go for kills. Well then yes, well then yes, you would fully cook your Ying Candela, give him the least amount of time to react, and run at the guy who is blind with your 80 round LMG. But if you're playing with your team and you're playing Ying correctly, what you want to do is only charge your Ying Candela about one, maybe two bars. The reason you do this is because it actually gives defenders time to react. Why would you want to do this? Well, if you're giving defenders time to react, a lot of the people don't know that you can just shoot the Ying Candelas. And because they don't know that, instinctually, they just run away from the Ying Flash or they turn away. And because you're giving them time to react and then they react, you can easily walk in while they're all running away and take the space that they just ran away from. It's especially good on roam clears or people who are lurking near site, but once you're on site, you want to start actually fully cooking these Ying Candelas so that you can maintain the space that you just took instead of prioritizing taking the space. Also, throwing a Ying Candela that is not charged at all while you're planting buys you the most amount of time before your Ying goes off so that you have the most amount of time to plant without them pushing you after the Ying has faded away. So making sure that you're actually charging Ying Candelas dependent on what your playstyle will be is something that is essential to becoming a great Ying player. Another attacker that takes space that you're playing wrong is Grim. Now Grim, a lot of people do not play correctly because he hasn't been out for that long. The mistake that I see a lot of Grim players making is they'll just throw B canisters at people that they already have information on. What's the point of throwing your bees at someone and getting pings on them if you already have a drone and know where they are, or you've already quick peeked and you already see where they are? There isn't much of a point, to be completely honest. The way that you use Grim is pretty much the exact same way that you'd use a Capitao Firebolt. You use it on somebody where you know the position they're playing, but you don't know the exact spot they're sitting in. This will give you the information, the exact information at that, that you would need in order to capitalize off of the information with you or a teammate. Keyword, teammate. Grim is a lot more team oriented than people in solo queue like to admit, because Grim implies that the information that you're getting with his bees you're going to act upon, and it's very hard to act upon information with only one player, especially if that player has to hold a launcher in his hand and then put it away very slowly, and it can especially get him killed. So making sure that you're playing Grim with teammates that can capitalize the off of the information instead of you is one of the most important key components of playing Grim that most people miss. Not only this, but if you know the exact position that a defender is sitting in instead of throwing canisters at him uselessly and wasting his bees literally just run at him and kill him you're going to waste a lot less utility this way so that you can use it on the site when it's more beneficial for the plant and the post plant moving it back to the defense though let's talk about my next operator castle a lot of people play castle wrong especially in the lower elo what you don't want to be doing as castle is castling the doorways to site. People still in 2024 castle the bomb site. You don't want to be doing this. For one, it makes it really hard for any of your teammates who are off the site to come back to site, and it can get them killed. But two, it makes it way harder for your people on site to leave the site in case they need to help your roamers or just swing and get a kill. What you want to be doing instead is castling lines of site off. So if you notice there's a long hallway that leads near or directly into site for that matter, you can then castle that off. This way, it doesn't actually stop anybody from rotating into the site, which even means attackers, but it at least cuts off a line of sight. The same way you play a zombie is the same way you want to be playing castle. You don't necessarily stop them from coming into the site, you just stop them from having long angles into sight so that you can rotate in or out of the bomb site safely. It's very easy to do once you learn what I'm talking about and you get some in-game example of not castling the exact site, but castling around it to extend the bomb site and to stop attackers from getting angles. Now, castle is a good anchor if you know how to play him correctly. Let's move on to the roamer role, where most people are playing Vigil wrong. Now Vigil is a very simple operator, and because of that, it's a very simple mistake that you're making. Instead of moving whenever you have his Vigil scan active, you want to stay completely still. Now, this might seem like a very simple tip, but in the grand scheme of things, when you're playing Vigil, it might actually be harder to do that in-game. The reason you want to be sitting still when you activate Vigil's ability is because when you sit still and you don't move at all, the little lines at the bottom of the screen that you see when you activate your ability will actually appear smaller to anybody who's droning you out. Now, if you've ever gone against a Vigil, you know that the smaller the lines appear, the farther away the Vigil actually is. But if you're sitting still, you make it seem like you're way farther away than where they're droning than where you actually are just because you're not moving. 
Now, because you're sitting still, they might think that the room that they're droning is completely clear, when in reality, you're sitting right in it. But because you're not moving, it makes it seem like you're way farther away than you are. Not only this, but if players have headsets, which 90% of them do, if you move while your ability is active, they're just going to hear you. So you might as well have not activated your ability at all because they know exactly where you are anyways. So making sure that you're sitting still and only shooting people whenever they're not droning you is a great idea as vigil because it actually makes your ability a lot more confusing and lethal, which is the entire point of playing vigil in the first place. Now the final operator that I can guarantee you're playing wrong is Nomad. Now it might be seem really simple how to play nomad just like it might seem really simple how to play vigil but just like the mistake on vigil being very simple the mistake on nomad is actually very simple as well what you don't want to be doing as nomad is holding flanks with your air jabs now this might seem like a crazy idea but i need you to hear me out before you go into the comments all angry as Nomad, there is not a single position on a flank where you can put an air jab and the defender who's flanking you can't just slowly walk up to it and shoot the air jab. This is why people have started playing Nomad a lot less, especially with the gridlock buff that just came in two seasons ago. Not only are they just really easy to shoot, but everybody is playing Solus right now, and Solus can see the air jabs. She can also impact the air jabs no matter where you put them on the flank. So instead of using her for flanks primarily, you should be using Nomad for runouts. Runouts are very, very easy to counter impact grenades with, because all you have to do with Nomad's air jabs to counter runouts is put the air jab super, super high above whatever you're trying to stop them from running out on. This will make it to where no matter where they impact grenade, the radius of the explosion won't actually destroy your air jab. It also makes it to where the higher up you put the air jab, it's much, much harder for people to see whenever they're trying to shoot the air jab before they run out on you. So this way, you eliminate both counters to Nomad's air jab. They can't impact it and they can't shoot it just by slowly walking up to it. So make sure that primarily if you're using Nomad, you use her for runouts and if not for flank watch, especially because you can just use drones for that instead. But with that out of the way, that is it for this video. Check out this next video. My name's Elka, sub the channel down below, and I hope I'll see you there. Later.